you, you know what the Monroe Doctrine is, right? The Monroe Doctrine basically says that the United States owns the Western Hemisphere, and no distant great power, be it from Europe or be it from Asia, is allowed to move military forces into the Western Hemisphere and form a military alliance with a country in our hemisphere. The Monroe Doctrine, which has not gone away, right? the Monroe Doctrine is all about spheres of influence. It says the Western Hemisphere is our sphere of influence. Do you think in 25 years, if China decides to form a military alliance with Canada or Mexico and station a couple Chinese divisions in Vancouver and Toronto, that we're not going to go ballistic? <laughs> You're a young guy, so you probably don't remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. Unfortunately, I'm not a young guy, and I remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. The idea that the Soviets were putting missiles in Cuba was completely antithetical to us. And then when they talked about building a naval base at Cienfuegos, we almost blew another gasket. The Soviets are not allowed in the Western Hemisphere. Why? Because it's an American sphere of influence. Why? Because it's our backyard. Well, if you're Vladimir Putin or any Russian leader, the idea that NATO is going to be allowed to drive right up to your border, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And you know, people will say, well, John, don't you understand that the Ukrainians are free to choose their own foreign policy. You often hear this argument. We were talking about this yesterday. The Ukrainians are free to choose their own foreign policy. They're a sovereign state. This is not a decision the Russians can make for them. My view is that's a very dangerous way of thinking about international politics. Ukraine is not a sovereign state when it comes to this issue. The Russians are not going to tolerate them forming an alliance with NATO. Right? And if Ukraine behaves like it is a sovereign state, right? It's going to get itself into a whale of a lot of trouble. This is what happened to Castro. Do you think the United States believed during the Cold War, and even after the Cold War, that Cuba had the right as a sovereign state to form an alliance with any state that it chose to? We didn't think that for one second. We did not think that for one second. And we went to great lengths to kill Castro and to strangle Cuba because Castro thought that he, like the Ukrainians thought, had the right to form an alliance with just any state. When you're dealing with great powers, and this is another lecture, great powers are ruthless. The United States is one of the most ruthless great powers in modern history. You cannot underestimate how ruthless the United States is. This is all covered up in the textbooks and the classes uh, that we take growing up, right? Because we, this is all part of nationalism. Nationalism is all about creating myths about how wonderful your country is, right? It's America, right or wrong. We never do anything wrong, right? If you really look carefully at how the United States has operated over time, it's really amazing how ruthless we have been. And the British, the same is true of them as well. Uh, but we cover it up. So I'm just saying, if you're, if you're Ukraine and you're living next to a powerful state like Russia, or you're Cuba and you're living next to a very powerful state like the United States, you should be very, very careful. Because this is like sleeping in bed with an elephant. If that elephant rolls over on top of you, you're dead, right? So you've got to be very careful. Am I happy about the fact that this is the way the world works? No, I'm not. But it is the way the world works, for better or for worse. Thank <laughs> you.